All right, our next topic is going to be vaginal and uterine prolapse. Now, vaginal and uterine prolapse are going to be one of the components of pelvic relaxation. Um, other components of pelvic relaxation are um, urinary stress incontinence, uh, as well as cystocele, rectocele, enterocele are types of vaginal prolapse and our uterine prolapse. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a triad when we're thinking about vaginal prolapse. And this triad is going to be the postmenopausal woman with vaginal protrusion and urinary incontinence. These are going to be diagnosed through simple pelvic exam. And there's going to be an increased visualization of the prolapse, especially when the patient is going to strain. Now, we have to tell whether it's a cystocele, a rectocele, or an enterocele. And if it's an anterior wall protrusion, it's going to be a cystocele. And a cystocele is going to be a herniation or bulging of the anterior vaginal wall and the overlying bladder base into the vaginal lumen. If it's a posterior vaginal wall protrusion, it's going to be a rectocele, which is herniation or bulging of the posterior vaginal wall and the underlying rectum into the vaginal lumen. And finally, we have if we have a pouch of Douglas protrusion, this is going to be an enterocele. And there's going to be herniation of the pouch of Douglas containing small bowel into the vaginal lumen. And these are different types of vaginal prolapse. Uh, another component of pelvic relaxation, like I just said, is uterine prolapse. And the degree of uterine prolapse is actually going to be indicated by an increase from grade 1 to 4. So grade 1 is going to be when the cervix, des cervix descends halfway to the introitus. Grade 2, the cervix is going to descend to the introitus. Grade 3, the cervix is going to extend outside of the introitus. And grade 4, also known as procedentia, is the entire uterus, as well as the anterior and posterior vaginal walls, and it's going to extend outside of the introitus. Our management Basically, this is a type of pelvic relaxation, right? So what we know is another um, type of pelvic relaxation like we went over earlier was urinary stress incontinence. And what do we remember from the urinary stress incontinence? What are we going to do? We're going to do Kegel exercises in pelvic, pelvic relaxation. So our management is going to be, if the patient has a minor degree of pelvic relaxation, we're going to just do Kegel exercises. And um, this is going to involve voluntary contractions of the pubococcygeus muscle. If the woman is postmenopausal, estrogen replacement may be useful. And if conservative management has failed, we're going to do a vaginal hysterectomy with anterior and posterior vaginal repair. So basically what's going to happen is the vaginal hysterectomy is going to repair the uterine prolapse. The anterior vaginal repair is going to repair the cystocele, and posterior vaginal repair repairs the recto rectocele. If the patient has a uterine prolapse, like we just spoke about over here, we're going to repair them with a vaginal hysterectomy. Postoperatively, we got to follow these patients up, and we have to make sure that the patients avoid strenuous activity. We want to motivate them to walk but we want to make them avoid strenuous activity for at least three months post-op because we don't want this uh, relaxation to recur. So we want to motivate them to walk, but we're going to limit the strenuous activity for about three months. And if the patient refuses to undergo surgery, we can actually um, insert these objects known as pessaries into the vagina, and this is going to elevate the pelvic structures into their more normal anatomic um, shapes. So basically that's vaginal and uterine prolapse. So that's everything you need to know about cystocele, rectocele, enterocele, uterine prolapse, how to diagnose them and how to manage them. Enjoy.